a tutorial on how to create a localization system in Unity. Keep watching until the end and you will learn how to create this. In order to make this, we need two scripts and a spreadsheet with a translation. Here's an example spreadsheet. In this case, we have an ID, a few rows of different languages. In my case, I will go for English, Dutch and French. English will be language number one, Dutch number two and French number three. You can add as many as you want, but I'll keep it easy for now. What the system will do is grab an ID and then will return the translated variant of that ID with the given language. We need to download this file as a tab separated values. We don't use the comma separated values, because then we cannot use commas in the text and it will mess things up when we try to read the file. Change the file type from TSV to TXT. If you don't see the file extension, click on View, Options, View tab and make sure Hide extension for known file types is unchecked. Put this file in your Unity asset folder. We then make a language handler script. This script will be responsible for handling the languages. It uses the spreadsheet as an input and divides all the needed words or sentences per language. Let's also make an enum to select our language. We then need a text asset, which is our spreadsheet, an enum to represent our selected language, a const string as a key for player press to save our selected language, a static instance for the singleton pattern, and a dictionary to store our translated words per language. If you don't know what a dictionary is, a dictionary is a data structure to easily retrieve data back using a key value pair. This is handy because if this was an array, you would need to loop through the entire array to find the object. Whilst with a dictionary, a hash is generated based on a key so we can easily get the data or value we need based on the key value. The downside of using a dictionary is that you can't have duplicates, which in our case doesn't matter. So we map a key to a value. We start by making the single pattern in the Unity awake method. Now we need a function called read text file. We'll split our text asset by splitting with the backslash t character and the backslash n character. The t character is a tab and the n is a new line, because the end of the file is a new line rather than a tab. We can calculate how many rows and columns we have. For the row size, we first split by new line and then grab the first element it returns. Then we split the first element of the line with the tabs, so we know how many items, so in this case rows, we have. To calculate the column size, we can simply have the document length divided by the row size. The length is 24, because we have 4 columns of 6. 4 times 6 is 24. So then we divide 24 with row size, which is 24 divided by 6, equals 4. This means we can dynamically add more items in our spreadsheet without the need of changing any values. We create two for loops one to iterate over the row size, and one to iterate over the column size. With these loops, we practically do this. Each iteration we grab the content ID, and then the string ID. Each iteration, this happens. And then, when we reach the end, this will happen. Do note, we add the current language in the end of the idea. This way we create a unique string ID. Because remember, a dictionary cannot have duplicates. And on a side note, it would of course be difficult to know which language we'd select without it. We then simply populate the dictionary with these values. Now that we've populated our dictionary with the correct translated values with key value pairs, we need a way to get the value back based on the given key, which in this case is the ID from the translation file plus the language ID. We can make it ourselves a lot easier by converting our current selected language enum to an int. Now we are ready to create a translator class to handle getting a string ID to a translated text. We would need a reference to a text mesh pro component, but this can also be a reference to text, whichever you are using. I'll go for text mesh pro as it is more customizable. We then create a function which returns the text from the text mesh pro component, because we need this as a key to get a translation. So the text from the component will have a string ID. Then let's create a replace text with translated text method, where the actual magic happens. We ask the language handler for the translated text by using the singleton. We then simply replace the text, which is the key, with the value from the dictionary. Let's see if this is working. I've pre-built an ugly menu to translate. And let's add the appropriate script as well, together with the drag and drops. So in this case, the string ID is mainmenu.welcome. We ask the dictionary. What is the translated value of main menu.welcome? If we have Dutch selected as language, we would receive back hoi. Well, this seems to work. But we cannot switch language yet. In order to do so, we need to create a few more functions in the language handler script. Let's create a reload language function. We can use player press to get the information for which language we want to load. 
if the player prefs key has not been found, we default to English. Don't forget to call the reload language function in the awake method, so when the game launches, we select the correct language. We can then simply create another small function called select new language. We receive the new language in the player prefs and then call reload language with the true boolean to reload the scene. This is needed because we lost a reference to a string ID once it's translated. Just for testing purposes, we can create three functions to reload the language. In the ugly UI I have created, there are three buttons to switch a language for. Don't forget our drag and drops again. And boom, it works! As you can see, we can exit the game and it has saved our language preference. Thanks for watching! If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Like if you liked, or dislike if you didn't like it. Please consider subscribing as well.